Hey everyone, this is Colt from the future this time. I'm adding this video in a few days, about a week after the launch of the course. And I'm recording it in response to a lot of discussion and questions and opinions I've seen on the Q&A boards. And it's all about an alternate syntax that you can use to initialize state in your component. So the first thing I'll say is that what I'm going to talk about in this video, I actually already talk about in the course just later on, but I've decided to add in a new video right here, the one you're watching, to introduce it earlier on, just to alleviate some confusion and talk about why I'm not using this special alternate syntax right now. Okay, so we've seen that initializing state's kind of annoying. You make a constructor, props, super props, and then this dot state equals. It's a lot of syntax just to initialize your state there is another way of doing it. Now the thing about this other syntax is that it's not actually part of JavaScript. It's not part of the JavaScript standard. It's experimental, quote unquote experimental. A lot of people use it, but you have to use Babel in order to use it. You can't just hop over to your Safari console, for example, and try and use this new syntax. So let me show it to you first, and then I wanna talk about how it actually works. And then finally, I'll talk about why I'm not teaching it up front and my views on using this experimental syntax. So I have a copy of this game component where we have an initial value for state with two properties, score and game over, and we're not even using game over. We just display this.state.score. So the alternate syntax uses something called the class properties proposal. It looks like this. We don't need a constructor. We don't need to say this. Get rid of my extra curly brace. We just type this right here. State equals an object directly inside the class. So not inside of a constructor, just on its own floating in the middle of nowhere. So this is much more succinct. It's nicer. It's much faster to type. I actually use this syntax all the time personally in my own developer life. What little of it still exists at this point. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's good. It is, I understand why people want to use this. And I want to say, if you prefer this, absolutely use this syntax. But there's a couple things you should know. First, let me just show that it does work. So game two, let's export game two. Go to our app.js. I think I've already imported it. Yes, so I'm rendering a game two. And you can see, we still get your score is 99. All right, so what's happening here is that Babel is taking this non-valid JavaScript code and converting it into valid JavaScript code where it's basically doing the exact same thing you see here. It's a bit of a simplification, but it's taking whatever property we define here and it's creating a new property on the instance or each instance of this component where it adds a constructor and in that constructor it sets state to be this value so we can still reference this dot state but again this is not real life normal javascript code and that's one of the reasons i don't like to lead with this uh, because a lot of students start off with create react app which allows you to write this code it has babel set up and pre-configured so that you can write this and you don't even have to know that it's not real javascript now it will probably be real JavaScript one day, but right now you still have to use Babel. And within Babel, you actually have to configure it or enable it to use this special proposal. So all of that is to say that it's new. If you try to use this in a React app without Create React app, um, you're going to have to do some configuration in order to use this and not run into syntax errors. So let's hop over to Babel and I'll show you the proposal here. This is the plugin for Babel that allows you to write that code. Again, if we use Create React app, this plugin is already enabled, and so we can use this nice class property shortcut. And just to prove to you what I'm talking about, if I try to take this, let's make a simpler version here. Just not make this a React component. Let's just try and define a class called game2, and directly in the class, define state equals an object like that. If I take this and I just paste it in my Safari console, Syntax error, unexpected token equal sign. So Safari does not like that. Now let's take a look at the Babel demo over here where you can click on try it out on the Babel JS website and you can see what it's doing behind the scenes. So if I define a class, let's not do anything React specific. We'll have class hello. And then inside of hello, we'll do something like, uh, let's do age equals 21, just like that. You can see over here, 
that it's added a constructor in, first of all, and it's called some method called define property. Now this is a Babel method. It's part of this plugin. And what it does, if we take a look at the source code up top, it's kind of confusing if you're not sure what you're looking at. But when we call define property or when Babel calls it, it passes in this, it passes in age, and then the value 21. So this, age, and 21. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. It takes that value, this, it takes age, and it takes 21. And on this, it adds a new property called age and sets it to 21. Or if I did state equals an object, and I set age to 21, you can see that it still calls define property inside of a constructor. It passes in the value of this, state, and then whatever the corresponding value is. And inside of here, it takes that object, this, that we pass in, and it defines a property on that object using the key and that value. So I don't want to get too bogged down in explaining how it works, but the point is that it is doing what we already have learned how to do. It's creating a constructor for you. Let's actually take the full React component here and come over here, paste this in. You'll need to make sure you have React enabled here. You can see right there, constructor, it calls super with the arguments from our constructor, which we usually call props, the name doesn't matter, and then defines property using this, state, and then that object that we initialized here. So it's just a shortcut. So why don't I like using this when I'm teaching? Well, I don't like using it because I think that it, for new students or people who aren't very familiar with JavaScript, it is deceiving. I've actually tried doing this before with a, a workshop where I have new students and I didn't know their skill levels or how much they knew about JavaScript and classes and this and properties, constructors. And I realized that a lot of these students took this right here and just assumed you could do this in any class anywhere in JavaScript, that this is just regular JavaScript and it's not. So that's the main reason I'm not teaching it. Uh, also, conceptually, when we look at this right here, even though it's bulky, it's ugly, it's very clear what we're doing. And when I say conceptually, I mean that you have to understand what a constructor is, what this refers to. You need to understand the idea of an instance compared to a class. It's more explicit, it doesn't hide things, it's longer, definitely, it's annoying to type, but you can make a little keyboard shortcut, you can, def uh, you can download a package in VS Code to create a component very quickly for you. So to sum all of that up, all I wanna say here is that use whichever you prefer. Um, I just wanted to explain my logic. So both of these are going to work. You can initialize state like this, where it's just on its own floating, you don't have to add a constructor, but just remember, this is not real JavaScript at this point, Babel is doing a lot of heavy lifting for you and creating the constructor, calling super, defining a property using this. So that's what we do here, and that's what I'm gonna to stick to for most of this course, is the explicit real JavaScript version that doesn't rely on Babel too much. Although to be fair, we are relying on Babel for a lot of what we're doing. For example, JSX, that's not real JavaScript. So I don't mean to be elitist about that. I'm just trying to keep things as explicit, as educational, I hate that word, as possible. Because this makes it clear what we're doing here. We're defining something on an instance of a component. We need to reference this, we need the constructor, you have to understand the idea of super. Anyway, I'm getting off track here, but I just wanted to explain my logic and my thinking. Feel free to use whichever works best for you. There is nothing wrong with using this nice short syntax. I like to use it. I just am not crazy about using it to teach to people who are not familiar enough with JavaScript and with classes to understand what this actually does. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet now.